Good day, student. My name is Fanny Yison de a literature teacher in Lagos State and an author. In our literature lesson today, we want to consider one of the prescribed poems by Waik and Neko, titled Pride King by William Morris. Our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, students will be able to identify the themes of the poem, explain the event in the poem, analyze the poem in terms of poetic devices, and divine the cause and effect in the poem. To start with, we want to consider the introduction and summary of the poem. The Proud King by William Morris is a 849-line long poem about a proud king named Jovnian, whose arrogance, pomposity, and pride leads him to rival the Almighty God. The entire poem shows his pride and his divine humiliation and punishment until he repents and how he regains his crown and magnificent palace. To make the poem easy for you, because it has 849 lines, I decide to divide the poem into five parts. Part 1 will be the introductions, lines 1 to 84. It describes the king's gigantic palace, his pride, and everything he considered, I mean everything he puts together to manipulate the people in his kingdom. Until one day, he decided to go for hunting expedition with his entourage. He had thrown his entourage and went in to inside the bush. He saw a big river and decided to swim. Before he could complete his swimming, all his royal apparel, his cloth, his horse were taken away. The part two of our division of the poem can be found in line 85 to 231. King Jovnia in his nakedness believed that the ranger is his best friend that, is, that will give him the befitting hospitality. He went to the ranger's house and introduced himself as the ruling king. When the ranger heard that the visitor introduced himself as a ruling king, he bundled him out of his house immediately. The party of our division can be found in line 232 to 322, King Jovnia's encounter with Duke Peters. Duke Peter is a worthy man. In fact, it was King Jovnia that enriched Duke Peter. The night that uh, King Jovnia was uh, humiliated, he was sleeping by the roadside and Duke Peter was passing by. He caused Duke Peter and one of the soldiers that was following Duke Peter uh, took a, 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 a cane and flogged King Jovnia thoroughly and ordered him to leave the town immediately. The part four of division of the poem can be found in line 323 to 525. I title it as Christopher Green's happy hand. Happy hand given to King Jovnia to come back to his palace in a naked form. When he reached the palace, he met another person ruling instead of him. In fact, his disgrace was a completed one because all his chamberlains, lords, servants, soldiers, even his queen, they deny him and they call him a mad person. They are all claiming that the person that is ruling instead of him was their original king. And the king made a proclamation that if King Jovnia can become a servant in the palace, that he will accommodate him. King Jovnia rejected the idea and he was disgraced, uh, he was disgraced and was born out of the palace. The last part, which is part five, I title it as Regret and Restoration of King Jovnian. After King Jovnian was born out of his original palace, he was wandering inside the forest and he came to a place called Amit. Inside the Amit, he met a priest and he introduced himself as the ruling king. The priest immediately rejected him and asked him to leave his Amit immediately. But he regretted his action and confessed how he rivaled the Almighty God. The priest prayed for him, sympathized with him, gave him food, gave him befitting cloth. He went back to his palace and he was recognized and celebrated. The mystery thing about this poem is that uh, the people that rejected him, the chamberlains, the lord, the servant, the soldiers, they are now celebrating him. We will pause from here briefly. When we come back, we will treat the themes of this poem. Thank you very much. Welcome back, students. We want to treat the themes of uh, the proud king by William Morris. We have different themes, but the popular ones are 
sovereignty and supremacy of God. Two, the theme of pride. Three, the theme of punishment. Four, the theme of repentance and restoration. I want to consider the theme of sovereignty and supremacy of God first. The absolute and universal supremacy of God is plainly and positively affirmed in some stanzas of this poem. God's supremacy over the work of his hand is vividly depicted in the angelic speech. He says, Thou hast learned how great a God is, who from the heavens countless rebels drive. Divine sovereignty means that God is God and is on the throne piloting all affairs and the counsel of his own will. This is the reason he is definitely elevated to crush the rebellion of Satan and associate. We have a theme of pride. In fact, the entire poem rested on the theme of pride. King Jovnia rival the Almighty God. He called himself God. And this is the reason why God punished him. In stanza 4, King Jovnia says, What need have high for temple or for priest? Am I not God? He called himself God. He downgraded his forefathers as not great king. You see, he's a maximum ruler. Nobody could advise him. So the pride is in him. So that is theme of pride. Then we have a theme of punishment. After Jovenia's arrogance, he is severely punished by God. He loses his crown, glory, power, team, respect, wealth, prestige, and value. All his close associates, they are calling him mad, mad, mad person, that he should not introduce himself as a king. Even the porter or security man in the ranger's house was abusing him that he should, he should try and get a cloth. You see, they, they are saying that his madness has reached the 70%. He was beaten by a soldier that he recruited. So, this is a theme of uh, punishment. Another theme is a theme of repentance and restoration. When everybody rejects Jovnians and considers him as a naked madman, he kneels down in, in his anguish and prays to God thus. Lord God, what bitter things are these? What hast thou done that every man that sees? O oh Lord, give me back myself again. The Almighty God pardons the king and restores him. Immediately after his restoration, those people that deny him, the Chimbalins, the Lord, the servant, the soldiers, even his queen, they were able to recognize him as their king. In some, some others, we consider other teams. That is, we have other teams. All other teams are embedded in all these four major teams. There are other teams like power and pride, prosperity and folly, self-delusion, sin and shame, repentance and restoration, ambition god's way are incomprehensible divine intervention bring changes reality of angel and hall the preeminence of god's mercy over his judgment thank you students i think we want to pause here when we come back we will consider the poetic devices that you know, the poetic device, they are the areas that students they encounter problem. When we come back after this break, we will consider the poetic devices of this poem. Thank you very much. Welcome, students. It is time to consider the poetic devices of the poem. Here, I want you to pay attention because this is the area that students, they find it very difficult to understand. But I will take pain to divine some of the common poetic devices. One of the poetic devices used by William Morris uh, is biblical 
allusion, biblical allusion. The proud king uses biblical stories as his springboard. The protagonist of the poem, King Jovnian, is a maximum ruler who equates himself to the Almighty God. King Jovnian is the replica of biblical pontate like King Nebuchadnezzar, King Herod, and King Pharaoh in the Bible. Don't forget that allusion is what? Indirect reverence. So, the entire poem has indirect reverence to the biblical story. We have the use of a rhetorical question. Rhetorical question is a question that does not need any answer. The answer is embedded in the question. In the anguish or in the problem of King Jovnian, he asked, Lord God, what bitter things are these? What hast thou done for me? All these are the questions that some that King Jovnia asked in agony. It doesn't need answer. Another, uh, the, another poetic device used by the uh, William Morris is uh, irony. The irony, we have different types of irony here, but the dramatic irony can be seen when the the angel or impositor that King Jovnian met in the palace when Christopher Green helped him that you see the impositor or the angel was claiming that he has been a king for many years in that palace and the late queen and the late father they are his parents we all know that this is a pure irony because it's not the real king don't forget that dramatic irony is that when the audience watching the plays, they know more than the character on the stage. You that you are reading, you know more than all the characters in that uh, poem. Then we have the use of antithesis, which is a contrast. In this poem, the magnificent palace of King Jovnias is compared to the wretched roadside that the king sleeps for three days. The kings that have been using the gigantic palace with soldiers, Lord Chamberlains, was found by the roadside, wretched roadside. Another antithesis can be is, uh, is the comparison of the rangers. The ranger is majestically dressed when King Jogfinia visited him, and the ruling king is naked. Naked, you see, that is antithesis the entire poem can be dramatized that's why we have dramatic elements there thus we can consider this under uh, devices used by the william morris the dramatic element here is that or suppose that a question is asked what are the dramatic elements it can come as a the whole question what are the dramatic elements in the proud king we have the characters here. And you know it can be dramatized. We have the characters like King Jovnians, the Ranger, Queen, Potter, Duke Peters, Squire, Christopher Green, the priest, and so on and so forth. Another dramatic element here is the use of dialects for conversation. The conversation between the Ranger and King Jovnian can be seen as if somebody, I mean, the characters are on the stage and they are performing their specific role. Then we have the use of stage stroke setting. Palace, Hamid, roadside, the form setting here. Magnificent palace, the Hamid of the priest and the roadside. Then we have action. King Jovnia's repentance or King Jovnia's ranting when his clothes was taken inside the bush. They are example of a, a dramatic element. Thank you, student. I wish you the best of luck in your forthcoming exam. Try to read this poem, and when you are reading, please pay attention to the characters. The assignment that I want to give is that go, I mean, discuss the character of King Jovnian. Discuss the character of King Jovnian. Thank you very much. I wish you best of luck.